Hey guys, what's going on? Zach from All Strength Training. I'm gonna walk you through how to individualize your squat stance. So there's gonna be two parts to this. So we're gonna do something called a hip scour, which usually we would wanna have someone else do this for you, but there's a way to do it yourself. And then we're gonna do a little bit of a standing diagnosis. So we wanna figure out two things. We wanna figure out what sort of width do we wanna have with our stance? How much of our toes we wanna to turn out? Do we wanna open our knees up? And then we also wanna look at what should our depth expectations be. So each phase of this assessment is gonna kinda of let you individualize that. So the first part is gonna put us on the floor. All right. So for this part of the assessment, this is called a hip scour. What we're trying to find is we're trying to figure out the way that the femur is gonna sit inside the acetabulum of the hip. Basically it means we're looking for the path of least resistance when it comes to getting full range of motion at the hip joint. So what we're gonna do is you're gonna lay on your back, you're gonna have the leg that's out, this is gonna be the testing leg, and then we're just gonna put the other foot flat. So I like, if someone else is gonna do this assessment on you, often you're gonna start with both legs straight and then they're gonna to start to move you around this way. But I also find that if you're the one just kinda of doing this on yourself, it helps to keep the other foot flat. Uh, just find it's a little bit easier to figure out the right position. So what I'm looking for is I'm gonna start with my leg, my knee, basically right over my hip, and all I try to do is bring my hip into flexion. And I'm looking to see, okay, how much range of motion can I get here? And then I wanna sort of explore some different spots. So this is just dead on, knee toward the chest, but my toes are not turned out. There's no abduction of the hip. And I wanna start playing with some different ranges of motion. So I wanna see how close can I get this way? Well, what happens if I turn my toes out? What happens if I open my knee up? When I come in this way, does it feel like a more natural position? Do I get better range of motion? And as I'm working through this, you can see on my knee as I come out, I start getting better flexion. Ultimately, if I let my knee come out, my knee's now wider than my hip. And if you look at my foot, you can see I've got a little bit of external rotation at the foot. So nothing dramatic. So I'm looking to see how close ultimately can I get the knee toward the chest. And I also want to make sure that when I'm doing this, I'm not feeling any pinching sensations inside the hip. Because no matter what happens, if we get some pinching, pinching sensations, that's going to kind of take that position off the table. So you could be very narrow with the feet directly underneath the knees at all times, all the way out potentially even to here, which would be like a pretty wide, like a sumo style squat stance. And, you know, and I'm going to find that I'm something right in here. So this basically has my foot right underneath my hip. But at the bottom of the squat, I've got some external rotation of the foot and I've got some abduction of the hip joint. And this is how I squat. So I know this is actually a really good position for me. And then I would repeat that assessment on the other side. Now, typically both sides should match pretty well, barring any sort of like impact or trauma to one hip. Sometimes you might get a little bit of a discrepancy, but typically most people are gonna present very closely to the same. So that's the first part of this assessment that we wanna do is just figuring out how do we individualize that? All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna try to figure out what should our depth expectations be? So one thing that we look at with the hip is the hip is an area that people often confuse tightness for weakness. So it can be tight, excuse me, but often the reason it's tight is because the hip flexors themselves are not strong enough to pull the body into hip flexion so as a protective thing, your body won't let you do it. So not only do I wanna know where should my stance be in terms of width and external rotation, but I wanna figure out how low can I fundamentally get without changing my pelvic position, I'm not trying to create any butt wink, and without changing spinal position. So a really easy thing to do is from a standing position, we're gonna test basically the active range of motion of the hip flexors. So the easiest way to do this is from a standing position, we're just gonna take the knee and we're just gonna draw it up nice and high. And you can see, if you look at my back, I'm trying to maintain a flat back. I'm not trying to shift my spine into this type of a position because we don't wanna be using that as our expectations when we squat. Now, if you're somebody who struggles with balance, feel free to hold onto a bench or, or grab a rack for some support when you do this because you're just, try, again, trying to figure out the active range of motion at the muscles in 
the hip flexors. So if I'm looking, I just want to see, can I get below parallel? And I'm going to kind of try to match that depth with my squat. So I can see my knee is a little bit higher than my hip. So if I blend the two things together, let's see how it carries over to my actual squat. So when we did the hip scour, we had the foot underneath my, my hips. We had the knees flaring out into abduction and we had a little bit of external rotation, about 10, 15 degrees. So if I set my feet roughly in that spot, can I make that squat stance work for me? So that would put me right about here, which for me is actually a very comfortable squat stance. It's my squat, my strongest squat stance. And when we did the active range of motion assessment here, we can see that I should be able to break parallel without any significant change in spinal position and without having any sort of pelvic tilt. So now if I turn to the side, same thing, I'm taking that squat stance and I just wanna see, okay, when I come down, can I get there and I can get there. So this gives me a pretty good general sense of where I should be. Now, if someone is failing this hip flexor assessment and we're only getting maybe to about here, I'm gonna expect that person is only gonna make it to about here before you'll start seeing things like a pelvic tilt or some spinal position changes. And all that means is that we need to build up the strength in the hip flexors to let the hips pull us into a lower position. So, but this is sort of like a looking at, okay, what is our short-term resolution? And then what can we do to address this long-term? So this is a great thing to check out. So if you're not sure what squat stance is right for you, or if you're not sure how deep you should be going when you squat, test yourself on this. If you need to, set up a video camera or your phone and just get something so you can watch it yourself and see, okay, where do I ultimately land? So give this a go, tell me what you think in the comments. Uh, if you like this, make sure you like the video and subscribe to our channel and give it a shot.